Let your presence be seen right now. In the name of Jesus, let there be a same day and the sending of angels into this environment by fire. Any power that is not of God, I send against the program of this morning. We destroy by fire. We roast them by fire. Holy Spirit, take over. In the name of Jesus, surround this environment with Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus, Shari Baba Kuriba, Shari Baba Shiriba, Kari Baba Shiriba, Shari Baba Kura. We frustrate every work of darkness. In the name of Jesus, you said in your words, you said you will disappoint the devices of the crafty so that their hand will not be able to perform their enterprise. Every enterprise of the evil ones will not be fired, will destroy by fire. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name for answering our prayers. For in Jesus, most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Please let be seated. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the living Jesus. Welcome, um, happy Mother's Day to everyone. And to our daddies too. And to the boys in the house, happy Mother's Day. And, um, please, let's close our eyes and pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, I am the fire. The one who wants to use and wait to talk. We return all glory and adoration back to you this morning. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for our fire. Lord, we thank you for where we are. And thank you for where you are taking us to. We welcome you into today's service, not just for the Sunday school service, but welcome you into this service today <coughs> to teach us, to help us, to tutor us, to lift our spirits in every way. We pray that as we go on in today's service, we do it all in the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, we will have every cause to give glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Um, please permit me. Today is the first time I'm doing um, a teaching. Yeah, so please, I might not use up to. Sorry, how many minutes? Only two minutes. How many minutes? Please? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes, please. Um, just abide with me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, for today's wonderful service. The topic is a woman, a treasure. When Pastor told me about this, I was thinking of what to, but this was what the Holy Spirit brought to my mind, and he helped me with Bible passages on Tuesday. So the, um, let's go to the Bible passages first. Um, Proverbs 31, 25 to 27, which says, strength and honor are her clothing. She is confident about the future. Her mouth is full of wisdom. Kindly teaching is on her tongue. She is vigilant over the activities of her household. She doesn't eat the food of laziness. And the second chapter is John 16, verse 21, which says, the woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. The third Bible passage is Proverbs 31, 31. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and <coughs> let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Then the fourth one, Proverbs 31, 28 to 29. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Then the fifth and the last one is Isaiah 66, verse 13, which says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Praise the Lord. As it says, the woman is an embodiment of a lot of things physically, and the Bible has helped us to define them too. The first one is from the first Bible passage, um, strength. We are epitome of strength. No matter what comes our way, we can handle it. 
A female strength cannot be compared in any way, both with the human and even the animal kingdom too. And as, as it stated here, even the lion that's been declared as you know, the greatest of the animals. Um, the male and animal only defines the prize territory, marking the area with urine, roaring to one intruders and children of animals that encroach on their top. Female lions are the prize family hunters and leaders. And um, I've seen um, a lot of documentaries and that is why once a female lion's um, strength is going out, they tend to push them away because they feel they will make them to be keeping, um, to be lagging back. But fortunately for us as human beings, we, we have grace more than that. Even if our strength is going down, we have God as saved us, we have Jesus Christ, we have God, we have the Holy Spirit to always energize us back every time. And anywhere we go in this world, women are just different. Um, the men should pardon me. Yeah, women's strength cannot be compared in any way yes, to the strength of the men, no. Um, you know, working in a retail um, place, I, I have noticed when the men comes in, there's this rush. Like, there's this rush that, ah, eh? Uh, to be cut, uh, where is this? Ah, where is that? I don't have time more. Ah, uh, this and that. I'm just coming back from work. And she said I should buy this. <laughs> I'm begging you. I'm a little bit confrontational. And I've confronted most of them. I'm like, and some of them, I know their partners. So I'll be forced to tell them, like, oh God, this is what Madame goes to. And no, I don't even tell them to calm down now. I said, sir, this is what Madame goes to whenever she's coming back from work. And most of them even come to market. I she do come to market sometimes to buy just one thing, and she end up with a very big bag. Yeah. Abima, <laughs> they'll say, ah, I plan to buy just something of one pound, like seriously, or some some will say just something of three pounds. Now I'm buying something of fifty pounds. I'm buying something of even sometimes hundred, and they have lots of bags that they don't even know how they will carry because they didn't plan it. Why the men just one thing that they said our daddy should help us to buy from the market. They are actually come just that one thing. Oh, you know, hey, I would like carry this now. I would like carry this. Now. Ah, I'm like, and thank God for the strength. And God will continue to strengthen us in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. No matter how hard the situation is in the family, even at workplace, people tend to turn to the female figures for solutions because of the natural instinct to provide solutions instantly. They don't think twice about it. Even before something happens, we have. Should I call it an assumption? We are naturally, like, we make assumptions naturally. Before before a child climbs a chair and falls, you've assumed it. So as you're looking at the child going near the chair, the father can be like, oh, they're feeling they're fogging. But in your mind, the child has not even moved close to the chair, but you have thought about everything that can happen already. And funny thing is, motherhood is very funny. For me now, I don't have a child. It's not until like you have, it's just a natural instinct. So sometimes I feel I'm being over with people's children. So maybe child, I'm, they were like, I said, no, something, and sometimes, you know, something will happen and the pair will now look, in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> you predict things even before they happen. And um, that is the very, um, should I call it superiority strength? Yes. And um, even sometimes in the home, I've seen um, women talk about, you know, the, they, they foresee things, not about spiritual instinct, just a natural instinct, even towards their spouse, and you know, they're like, ah, um, this, 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 and this, like, they've just known, known that something might happen if you do this, and I feel that's why our daddies most times, you know, when they want to do something, they will say, ah, and mommy, what about that? Because they too know deep down in their mind that they can't do this alone, and they need a woman's instinct to actually do things too. Praise the Lord. No matter how hard the situation is in family or place of work, um, people tend to talk to female figures for solution because of natural instinct to provide solutions instantly, which is one of our major strengths. We are proactive. We don't think twice before doing things. We predict, make assumptions, and have already made solutions before events occur. That's how we are created by God. That is why if a home is failing, children are misbehaving. Before anyone will ask, 
the man any question, to face the woman first. God has given us the inner and outer strength to not only build, but to maintain, seal a good end in Christ Jesus. If there's a family project of a house, for example, a woman has a better idea of how it should be than the man, in all fairness. A woman will go to the market, take care of the home, the physical cleaning, your husband and the children and their extended family, and their extended family members far and near without a sweat. Still wake up in the night and, and still during the day, do spiritual exercise, spiritual cleansing, building spiritual strength to protect the family by all means. Pray for immediate extended relations to be sure everyone is at peace. Touching all areas, leaving nothing behind, just like a physical cleaning. You can't give what you don't have. You have to be straight to yourself first. So this is how um, this is where I will you know, talk to us that we should be straight to ourselves first because really it's out of the well of what you have that you give to others. It's out of the wisdom you have that you share with others. It's out of, of what you have inside of you that you share with others. Believe in yourself first before you can have the same impact on anyone else, even those closest to you. You give out of the abundance of you. The late Abbot Wigwe called his wife my strongest asset and my greatest cheerleader and my greatest strength. She built herself up before impacting the husband. When I was reading through her story, it's so really funny that story. In that death, people started naming a lot of things about her. Really, that woman is stronger than them. In all ways. In all ways. She's more like the strength of the man. In all ways. A woman must not be lazy. You must always de- um, always so you must always be dedicated and diligent. We are natural planners. We plan to stay ahead of anything. Then the second one is um forgiving. John 16, 21. Um it is an attribute to celebrate. Women are not God, no. They get hurt, we cry, we feel pain, and we forgive like it never happened. No matter what happened, I think it's out of the motherly love, generally. Even to people around us, you know, when people offend us, fine, I will leave it to the men to easily um, forgive, but we women too, you know, when you, when, when something happens out of love, you know, you just let it go, eventually. Women over pain out of unforgiveness. The devil understands this so well and has turned a lot of women to wounded vessels, carrying their pain about. Forgiving might seem to be hard to, but it brings peace to the mind. Men really over pain. It's not really in their nature, but women have the grace to let go and have enough space to over if they choose not to let go. And I think that's where the personal, um, you know, that's why for women, I feel we need more personal retreat than men. Because really, we, most times, when you talk about maybe depression and all these things, it's more to the women's side than the men. In a way, men have this, you know, when something happens, but we women, that's why I don't feel it good because it's just part of us. We can hold on to things when we want to. And really, God is not expecting us to. He's expecting us to let go. So sometimes we need grace to let go. And sometimes God is waiting for you to heal, which is out of your own personal consciousness, to let go. Because sometimes um, God is trying to drag something away from you, but you're still holding back to it. Maybe um, a friend has offended you at the place of work, and God is telling you, forgive this person. And you are still holding on to it. He will not enter your heart and remove it. He's waiting for you to what? Let it go. But I don't know. Men just don't have that thing. You know, when something happens, sir, it is gone. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. But I don't know. I can't say God did something. No, God didn't do anything. That is, you know, God created us perfectly. But I just feel there's just this part of us that we 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 can, uh, we can hold on. I, I don't know. I think God just, I, I don't know. Should we call it test? I don't know. God just, and I feel, you know, we, but he has given us grace to, 
to have control over that aspect. So if you hold on, you are hurting yourself. And if you let it go, you are helping yourself. And you therefore understand it so well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have therefore understand it so well. And I saw a lot of women to win this vision. Carrying their pain about, forgiving my sin to um, sin to be hard to sin, but it's been peace of mind. Men really hold back to. It's not really in their nature, but women have the grace to let go and have enough space to hold back if they choose not to let go. Both can't stay together. That's it. Both can't stay together. It's like saying you want to be clear and evil at the same time. No. It's either you are, you, you are here or you are here. You can't be right in the middle. So you, you can't say, I'm forgiving mommy, but I still hold her back in my heart. Mm -mm. That means you are still holding her back. Even if I show her love physically, I'm smiling at her, looking at her, and I'm holding her back in my heart. I'm not forgiving you still. I still that's how heaven says it. When you let go, you, so we should, um, okay, but, okay, both can't stay together. It's either you allow peace to win, or you work about with your heart and do things. And the devil understands this so well that once a woman is wounded emotionally, it is like an infectious disease. She will definitely be like an angry, wounded lion emotionally, without happiness and peace of mind. And I feel because the devil understands the, the role the women play in the family, which is very, very vital. Um, please, pardon me to use this word. I call the devil a bastard. And um, I think you understand man can even more than we do. And that's why sometimes he catches us on our way. Because he knows that the woman, you know, some things must just not happen to you. It affects everybody. And he will just let you, you know, he will, he will just push you to those things. Because he knows that once that thing happens, the whole family is disoriented, uh, is disoriented already. So he will just look for it and just try to, and God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. It will cause greater pain eventually because God will not walk with someone like that. That's why he said we should forgive at all times because the devil will want us to get caught and become useless through personal relationships, work relationships, friends, family, and cutting wood. We must always remember that we are women we are expected to forgive, forget, and care for those around us as the motherly attribute given to us by God. It's divine. Whether you see the treasure stored inside you or not as a woman, it won't die. It will just remain dormant till you allow it to glow. Then the world will see it. Praise the Lord. Amen. The third one is honor. Proverbs 31, 31. No matter how important a man is, when he steps out with a the wife, they look at the wife of his honor. No matter how big the governor or president can be. I remember the days of um, President Thomas Kedjot. You know, people just have this thing for, um, I don't know what I'm calling, is it Mrs. Stella? The late um, wife. I don't know. And people use that love for him in a way. And sometimes, you know, before people will look at the man, consciously or unconsciously, they are looking at the woman first. No matter how important the man is, when he steps out with his wife, they look at the wife of his honor. The remaining is what they give to the husband. That's why some men are very particular about, you know, when they go out, um, they're particular about the wife's dresses. And they are very particular about the wife's character outside. Because even if the man, even if a man is well, well behaved, you know, dressed well, if there's something wrong with the woman, they take it off their mind and they just use the woman to dress the man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The women is what they give to the husband. If the wife doesn't deserve honor, you will see how they will behave to the husband. Mm -hmm. Honor is just as important as well. Mm -hmm. They say in Yoruba that you are growing, looking for money, you met prestige. If you get money, God will use the money for that. Women are embodiment of honor. If a woman is driving in those days, yeah, I remember very well in those days of. Um, when we used to have a lot of police stop on that road, now I was looking for one is that why is that they really saw the road? They said sometimes they don't know who you are. You know, they feel a woman behind the wheel. You know, most women, I think women drive, but they feel, especially when you're well dressed, they feel like they don't know who you are. 
So I just I've noticed they stop the men more than the women. So they say they don't know who you are, so they feel okay, this woman should be going. Okay. Anywhere a woman goes to, irrespective of age or marriage status, they will respect you. Even in Yoruba culture, even um, as soon as the child is born, they start calling me mommy. I'm like, what? Well, is that me? Like, even at the, um, even at a very small age, honor is another attribute a woman has divinely. The devil knows this. He will orchestrate molestation, bad relationships, both personal and at home, among friends, just to make you feel less of yourself. How will you enjoy the virtue God has placed inside you naturally when you lack confidence in yourself? You look at yourself each time. All you see is the mess you are in or have been through. Cheer up. God has not given up on you and did not create and you did not create yourself. You are just a clay. The molder is never done with you. Never. Don't give up on yourself at all. There's nothing that you feel you have lost that can be restored back. With God, all things are possible and all things will be restored like it never occurred. It all depends on your mindset. You must be liberated in your spirit first. You must see yourself in the way of God. You must see the way you look um, you must see yourself in the way God is seeing you, bold, beautiful, filled with honor, and must be liberated in your spirit first. Okay, honor and prestige. Not shaken, not pulled down, standing tall with God as backbone, not moved by why by what has happened because the devil is a toothless liar roaring for nothing. With God on your side, you will walk in the path of the enemy with your chain high up because you are the father's favorite daughter. God said and was in the blood of Jesus. Renewed, revamped for God's purposes. Praise the Lord. Please, um, I need to go to the fourth one. Please, once you get to him, please let's read through it. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, the fourth one is blessed. A woman is a child of blessing, not only to her immediate family, but to the old world. You are like a lamp. We shine all through. We must be a blessing to ourselves first. Mark 12, 30 to 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. We will be a blessing. We will be a blessing to ourselves by loving God first. We can't do anything without him, but all things through him. Now we now we love others as ourselves. Um, like I just said, before I can love mommy, I must love myself first. And that did not say love your neighbor more than yourself. So that means you must love yourself first. And that's why some people try to love, but you know, they can't maintain it. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about normal, like meeting people, and, and they can't maintain it because they don't even love themselves. So when they go back home, there's this thing that still holding on back to. Praise the Lord. We, we we become a blessing to others as we have been to ourselves first. That's why self-love is important. You can't bless with what you don't have. Because to bless others, or, um, to bless others, it means you show love to others. How can you then do it if you don't love yourself first? We can never give what we don't have. Even if you are the richest woman in the world, to be a blessing to your family, your friends, community, nation, and the whole world, you must do it from a place of love. Compassion, you must be moved to want to, to be good to those around you, to make positive impact or change. Then you show the same to others. It's not, if not, you will be doing things um, for people from the place of frustration. Self-realization um, self is very important. You must, you must discover yourself first or be discovered. Then you can transmit to others. That's why before God will use you for a project, he will give you training first so that by the time he gives you the work of opportunities to be a blessing to others, you won't fail. To some, it will take away pride. Some, it will be a character that can later cause issues. Some can even be anger and so on. Now, um, to the fifth one, comforter. A woman is a place of solace, a place of refuge, and a place of peace. The devil understands this so much and has made some mothers near to the family through frustration, anger, and hurt. It's not limited to the immediate family alone, to the whole world. Wherever a woman goes to, she must be a balm to those around her that suit all who come across her. This can be in words of kindness, counsel, helping, and so on. If a woman sees a child cry, crying on the way, the child does not need to be hard before she will take care of the child. It's natural. We are mothers. Babies seek our comfort. 
spiritual comfort. The man only has been member but to all around us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for today. And we bless your holy name because you have helped us already. And you will continue to help us. We can't, because we can't do anything on our own except for you. So we, we release ourselves to you. And we say, God, help us in every way. Amen. Heal us in every way, O oh Lord. Amen. And make us a vessel of to honor Amen. till the very end in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are happy to be in the presence of Almighty God, shall we rise up on our feet as we begin to wave our hands to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the one that has made it possible for you and I to be in this garden. Let's lift our hands as we begin to appreciate him. The Bible says, in the presence of God, he said, lies the fullness of joy. He said, at his right hand, there are pleasures forever. Let's begin to wave our hands unto the glory of God. Because many are looking for this opportunity to never have it. It's not because we are special. It's not because we are special in any way. It is because he has shown mercy. He says, I will show mercy on whoever I want to show mercy. And I will show compassion on whoever I want to show compassion on. Because he has counted us worthy to be among the living. Let's begin to appreciate him. Father, we thank you, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Jesus Christ. Our Father, we thank you, Jesus Christ. The King of Kings, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. It's not by own making, neither by own understanding. Nor by own arrangement that you have brought us to be in your presence. It's by your grace. It's by your compassion. Holy Spirit, we give you all the grace. We receive all the glory unto you this morning as it has said. Let's begin to commit uh, the service unto Zebuah. That God should have his way. The Bible says wherever two or more are gathered, he says he's in their presence, he's in their midst. Holy Spirit, we want to witness you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit the service unto you, Lord. We commit the praise and worship unto you, Lord. Holy Spirit, dwell in our midst. Holy Spirit, dwell in our midst. We, Lord, Father, we pray, oh Lord, your presence will come down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to tell God that he will meet us at the point of our needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, we go home. We be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we are praying. When I come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence,
church and our church. Glory be to our Father, which art is in heaven, the almighty God who have accorded us the grace to be part of this modern, to be part of this year's modern day, day celebration. And congratulations to all our mothers in the house. The book of Lamentations 3, 22 to 23 says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy does not come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
May his name be glorified forever in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are supposed to be worshiping with us for the first time, we welcome you. If today is your first time of visiting, please kindly fill our visitor's card, which will be handed to you soon, and please return it after filling and kindly wait after the service so that we can know you better. Thanks for your visit. May the Lord, may the Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We rejoice with all over, with all those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries today, this week or this month. May the Lord give you the grace to celebrate more of this with good health, joy, and prosperity in Jesus' name. Amen. We are a small church. Please let others know about us. Help us share our e-leaflets on your WhatsApp to everyone you know in the neighborhood, please. We all have the hard copy version. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Our weekly services are as follows. On Sunday, service starts at 10 a.m. in this auditorium. Wednesdays is our Bible study time with God. But um, online on Facebook and media outlets, starting from 8 p.m. UK time. Prayer meetings, prayer changes things, 8 p.m. UK time, online also. We do hold evangelism. If interested, please let the church leaders know. Giving in the church is voluntary, but for now we only accept cash or vouchers. We do not, we are not taking um, tax payment, but soon. God bless. Please, when you give, kindly fill your envelope properly. This is for accountability and charity purposes. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to every mother in the house and. Uh, we welcome everyone of you to this uh, special service. And the next item on our list is uh, the recitation of poems prayed by uh, Ire and Mayowa. Let's clap our hands for them. Praise the Lord. loving hands to help him. The tear drops from each baby's face, and so he thought of, mo of mother. He could not send us here alone and leave us in fear alone without providing for his own the outstretched arms of mother. God could not watch us night and day and know beside our crib to pray, but kiss our little ach to ache his own way, and so he sent us mother. And when our childhood days began, he simply could not take command. That's why he placed our tiny hand securely in mother. The days of youth slipped quickly by, like sun was high in the sky. Full grown, we, full grown we were, yet ever nigh, to love us still was mother. And when life's final year shall end, I know that God will gladly send. To welcome home her child again, that ever faithful mother. Please let's stand up for our hymn for today's service. For the Lord help us in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers in the house. I'm so happy to see you in the presence of God. May the glory of God continue to shine upon your life forever and ever, even in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So those people who are saying that, when am I going to get married? When am I going to have children? Your one is on the way in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, in the name of Jesus, miracle will happen in the powerful name of Jesus. It is well with you in Jesus' name. When I am going through stuff, there is something I always use to encourage myself. You can find it in the book of Psalm 37, verse 34. The King James is not that meaningful to me, but when I use TLV, that is my message. Let's read it. Psalm 37 says, verse 34, Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exhort you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. But the one I love most, the version I love most is TLB. It says, do not be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling. Did you hear that? Keep traveling steadily along his pathway. And in due season, he will honor you with every blessing. And you will see the wicked destroyed. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. You will not wait in vain for nothing. Amen. The glory of God will manifest in your life. Amen. Even in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we are going to exalt ourselves. We are in his presence to hear what he has for us. And before I go into that, shall we bother our heads for prayer? Holy Spirit of the living God, King of glory, Rock of ages, everlasting Father. We have come before you. We love you so much with all our hearts. You look around you, around us. There is no one like you. You are simply the best. We love you for who you are, for what you have been doing in our lives. We can't just thank you enough because you are beautiful beyond description. Holy Spirit of the living God, we are here at your feet, O oh God, to hear your word, what you have for us on this day. I decrease myself, and I want you to increase. I'm a child. I cannot speak. You are the only God that can put your word in my mouth. Fill me with your word, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that will set your children out of captivity or whatever they are going through. Let your word be a release unto their lives in the powerful name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, take over of this section in the name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. Even in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Praise God. I'm using this opportunity to bless the name of the Lord. I need time because I have to run very fast. I have so many things to talk about. And um, the time is not on my side at all. The time is not on my side at all. Today, by God's grace, I'll be discussing a topic that was given to me by God. You know, some people, when God speaks to you, they will say it's by God. Some people, they say it's by the Holy Spirit, whichever one. Holy Spirit gave it to me, and God has always been doing that, doing that in my life. He has always been so faithful. Anytime I call on to him, I say, Father, I don't know what I'm going to share. What do you want me to tell them before I know what is happening? God will just give me a message. But this time around, it's just a word. No prefix, no suffix. Just a word, and the word is set to. That is what God gave me to share with you, um, my sisters, my mothers in the Lord. So that is what we are going to be talking about this morning. Um, God said, set to, and that is it. And I know that whatever that is unsettled in your life, God Almighty will set to it in this day, on this day, on this special day, by fire, by the power, in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. So what is setting? What, what do we mean by setting? 
settlement to resolve or reach an agreement about an argument or problem. It also means resolve or sort out. It means to pay a debt or pay an account in full. It is to set up, to pay in full. For example, I've settled my bills, I've settled my loans, I've settled my debts, and so on. All of us, we are, we are, we are familiar with the word title, and we know what kind of, uh, I mean, we are aware as to what we mean by settle. We are familiar with that word. And what does it mean, biblically? It means to bring to rest, to establish, or secure permanently. So in our world today, nothing is established or secured permanently, but the word of God does that for us, to those who believe in the word, word of God. So what does the Bible say about being settled? If you look at what the Bible says, I love this scripture so much. I keep on using it all the time. I don't want to use it as my test for today. But I'm going to make a reference to it, and that is what I'm going to read again. It's one of my memory verses that I love so much because it mentions something that has to do with settled. That's why I'm using it. Not as my test. I just want to mention one of the scriptures that actually mentions settled. First Peter um, chapter 5, verse 10. But may the God of all grace, who has what? Who has called us to his eternal glory? by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, he will do what? He will, perf he will do four things for us. He will perfect everything concerning us, he will establish us, he will strengthen us and settle us. And so shall it be unto us on this day in the powerful name of Jesus. God Almighty will establish, he will strengthen us, he will perfect everything and settle us in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you look at the Bible, like I said, I'm going to run very fast because time is not on my side. Um, okay. Um, we are going to look at the people. I'm going to start because I've been talking about two um, different categories of people that falls into the same category in the same categories. What I mean is I'm going to be talking about people who have unsettled life in the scripture. The same people that have unsettled life, unsettled mind, is the same people that had settled life and settled home, settled mind. So I'm going to start with them. And I'm going to mention that there are more than five in total, but I'm going to just mention them briefly and move on to because I'm going to be laying emphasis on one of them. The first one is Agar. We all know the story of Agar. She's his maid servant of um, Sarah. We all know what happened to her. She's the first person that had unsettled life. Why? We knew what she was going through that time when she was sent out of her home by Sarah because she was mocking Sarah because she was childless. What happened to her? She left the house and she was in a particular place, maybe in a field or in a wilderness or wherever. She ran out of water and she was looking at that baby opposite her. You know, anybody can die of starvation. That child was about to say, I don't want to see this child die in my bed. And God Almighty, I had a prayer. Before I go to that, I will first of all mention the unsettled life she had. The unsettled life she had, she was sent packing out of her house. She was sent away. I'm talking about her, that she was sent away. I'm going to mention what happened to her thereafter. The second person that had unsettled life is Hannah. We all know her story. Her story is so popular in the scripture. She has been trusting God for the fruits of the womb for so many years. We knew what she did, how she went to the temple. She never stopped on a single day. Anytime they go to Shiloh, she's always there, pouring her heart unto the Lord. And the third person, like I said, I cannot analyze all of them. We all know we are familiar. We are just doing a kind of exhortation just to exhort ourselves. It's not to actually, you know, expand on each and every one of them. But I'm going to analyze one of them at the end of this. And the third person is Esther. We all know what happened, you know, when they wanted to destroy the Jews. She was one that rose up and um, she prayed. But before that time, she had unsettled life because any unsettled life or unsettled mind had unsettled life. That is what happened to this lady, Esther, as well. Because they wanted to kill all the Jews. And uh, Mordecai told her, you were in this kingdom for a purpose. God has brought you to this place for a purpose. 
Maybe that's the reason why God has brought you. So you have to act, you have to do something about the Jews. Like I said, I'm not going to go into it just to give us a summary about what happened. She, ha she Her heart was troubled before she started praying and fasting. That is her side. Then the fourth one is Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. What happened to her? She went through hell because she saw her own child going through affliction, oppression. Our Lord Jesus Christ was wounded. She was there at the point of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. She was there as well. We can imagine the torture she went through. She had on certain life as well. The last person, which is Ruth, that is where I'm going to focus on. Who is Ruth? We all know her. She's popular in the scripture. So who is Ruth? Ruth is predominantly a girl name of Hebrew origin, meaning her name is friendship. You know, sometimes um, back in our country, the name given unto you, it speaks who you are, the kind of life you will live. That is why we need to be very careful the kind of names we give to our children because it's what, is it that it works for them or against their life, will not work against their life in Jesus' name. I'm just trying to give example. So this root, it means friendship. We can now see the reason why she was doing what she was doing. I believe, although God was not mentioned in the book of Ruth, throughout from the beginning to the end, God was not mentioned. But somewhere along the line, we realize that <laughs> she has the spirit of God in her. The kind of life she lived is different from the life those people of Moabites, because she came from Moabites. I will get to that. So what am I trying to say here? There are lots of them in the Bible. One of them is Sarah as well. Who are the women? No, before I go into that, I'm, I'm talking about Ruth because I'm trying to be fast. I don't want him to say because every year is always like that. So I've made up my mind that this time around, I'm not going to run out of time. And at the end of the day, I'm not able to share what I wanted to share. So I'm just moving on to the next one. So I'm talking about Ruth. So we all know what happened to her. She got married to this man to the um, son of... Um, um, Naomi, and unfortunately, Naomi and her husband, they moved to Moab for, they were there for 10 years. Why did they leave Israel? Why did they leave Judah? They left Judah for a purpose because there was famine in Judah and they had to seek pasture somewhere else. And it happened that Moab is the right place for them. Just like we, we travel miles, miles um, from Nigeria to this land. What have we come to do? for green pasture, because we know this place is flowing with milk and onion. That, uh, that's the reason why they came. The same thing applies to Naomi and her husband. They moved, unfortunately, as fate will have it. Uh, the husband died along the line. The two sons that got married, Ruth got married to one of the children of Naomi, and the guy also died. What happened? There is no more husband. And Naomi was telling them, go back to your parents. The other girl, the other lady, the other wife, that one left when Naomi told her. But Ruth said she's going to stick to her mother-in-law. She's not going anywhere. Your people are my people. That means she has made up her mind to follow her mother-in-law. To be honest, I'm sorry to say, some of us, we don't like our mother-in-laws. We don't want them. We don't want them around us. But we prefer our own mother to be with us, to stay with us as many years as we could, but we, we don't like her for no reason. But her case is exceptional. That is the good character, good trait of Ruth we can pick from her. She's of good characters, and we can see more advice. Who are they? We remember them, how they came into existence. We remember Ammon, and we remember uh, Moabites as well, where they came from. They are the children. They are the two daughters of uh, Lot. We knew what happened. What they did, because our children are here. I don't want to mention what they did. I believe we knew what they did. As a result of that, God is not happy with the way they came into existence. And then the children of Israel, although they actually forced them into worshiping idols, because Moabites, they forced the children of Israel from worshiping idols. And also, not only that, what did they do again? We remember the story, I don't like my husband sharing, is to do with Phineas. Phineas, they've seen the children of Israel have screen against God. And um, there's this particular Israelite just came in. That is the sin they are coming because the Moabites mm. has made the children of Israel to commit a particular sin. And God was angry. And they are asking God for mercy. And this guy came from nowhere. He's an Israelite. So they come. He brought a Midianite. White people were crying unto God to forgive them. And what happened? Phineas just stood up from where he was sitting. He knew what to do. I don't like him telling the story. That's one of his favorites. 
that's not where I'm going right now. So what I'm trying to say is uh, the Moabites, why the Israelites so much hate the Moabites? I'm talking about uh, Ruth being a Moabite. And she was, they were not liked by the Israelites at all. But as fate will have it, Naomi told her, go back, she refused to go and she followed her. She said, I don't have any husband to give you. I'm of old. I can't have, even if I have a child today, you cannot get married. She just insisted. Do we know? Can we, can we figure out the reason why um, Ruth doesn't want to go back to her country? She wanted to stick with Naomi. So many things was actually running through my mind. I was thinking maybe the kind of life Moabites are living, she doesn't want to. If you look at our country as well, we have this particular custom that if your husband dies or you divorce and you go back to your parents' house, what happened? The people in that vicinity, they will be looking at you, Odale Moshu, am I right? They will say Odale Moshu. So maybe because of that, I'm just trying to figure out the reason why um, the reason why she doesn't want to, you know, the reason why she doesn't want to actually stay in Moabite, I was thinking maybe she has lost her parents. I was thinking maybe she doesn't have any family anymore. I was thinking maybe she has looked at the character of those people in that vicinity. And she discovered that, no, they are no match to her because she has been living with uh, Naomi for years and she has been able to master you know, the kind of life she was living because the life of Israelite is different from the life of Moabite. They are there, but they are not practicing. That is me thinking. They are now, you know, following the lifestyle of the Israelites because of the way they eat, what they eat, what they drink is different from the Moabites. You can be, you can go to other places, but that trait in you as a Nigerian. When we speak, we go anywhere. People will know that this one is a Nigeria. Is it that through the way we speak? Is it that through the way we talk? Is it that through the way we dress? they will know. The same thing I think, that is what I was having at the back of my mind. And for the fact that our character doesn't suit, that is me talking, our character doesn't suit the people in Moab. That is the reason why she felt that, oh, I don't think I can you know, stay in this place. And she follows, she followed her mother. You know, as fate will have it, somewhere along the line, she came across Boaz, who is very successful, is a farmer, is very rich. And who would have thought, Ruth, I'm just jumping into a hasty conclusion because I'm looking at the time. Time is no longer on our side. You know, we are still going at least it's 15 minutes back. And at the end of the day, what happened? She got married to Boaz. How did it happen? You know the reason why God made it to happen? God made it to happen because people look down at Moabites. Left to God, God wouldn't have actually allowed that to happen, but God knows everything about it. Because this lady, she stands out. Let's quickly go through her characters. She has four, seven lessons. I mean, seven lessons I want us to learn from her. There is hope, even in the midst of difficult time. There is hope. In the difficult, like, let's use the example of those people who had unsettled life. Let me start with um, Aga. Angels of God appear to her. What is the problem? What are you going through? What is happening to you? And... Her height was open spiritually, and she was able to see the well, the well water somewhere. And she fed that child with water. And that is the solution to her problem. She was troubled in her mind, and God said to her, what about uh, Sarah? The same thing. I don't think anybody has ever broken a uh, record about our mother, uh, Sarah. I don't think so. At the age of 90, she had a child. She never knew it's going to happen. She had a child. That is her story. And the third one, we, I think we mentioned Esther as well. She stood in gap for the Jews. She stood in gap for them. They went into three days prayer and fasting. And God answered them. We all know what happened to Anna at the end of the day. So who is the fourth person? Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can see the beautiful good news about our Lord Jesus Christ, which we will continue to do till eternity by fire, by the power and the blood of Jesus. She was crying, but wherever she is now, she will be happy that she did not give back to ordinary child, but supernatural child. So the fifth person is Ruth. Did we see the beautiful things that came out of her? What is the beautiful things that came out of her? Can we ever believe Ruth will be found among the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ? They cannot talk about the lineage of Jesus Christ without talking about Ruth. 
what did she do? These are the seven lessons we're going to learn from her. The first one, there is hope even in the most difficult time of our life. What is the problem? What is the challenges? What are we going to? My, my mother's in the Lord. <laughs> it's not difficult for God. You know, I always say this to anybody that comes my way. If you say you are going through anything, <laughs> you are going through it for a purpose. It's to strengthen us. If anybody should say, I will be here, I will say he's alive, I will still come into something I'm going to share quickly. Then the second one, the past is not our final destination. When we trust God, when we trust God, forget about your past. Let your past be buried in the past and move on with your life. It's past. There is nothing you can do about it. Just forge forward, move forward, and focus on the plan of God concerning your life. The third lesson we need to learn is about Ruth. Sharing openly about our relationship with God brings intimacy to relationship. I will say it, and I will say it again. What changed my life is the word of God. My brothers and my, uh, my sorry, my mothers in the Lord, let me just quickly say something. It's nothing but the truth. I'm not hiding anything. I came from a family where my father was a pastor. My father was not only a pastor. My father was an apostle. My father was not only an apostle. My father was a superintendent, the highest post in the apostolic church. Yes, that's my pastor, my father. But unfortunately, no thorough teaching on the word of God. I'm sorry to say this, Father, forgive me. I have to say because somebody has to learn something today. Nothing like that. I can remember somebody sent something via WhatsApp about the type of pastors, categories of pastors we have. They said there are some pastors, some of them they are business. This past, a pastor is, can, be, can be a businessman, a pastor can be a, a family person, a pastor can, I said, ah, a pastor can be a church person. My father, they fall, my parents, they fall into church person. You know what I mean by church, that everything about them is church. When we are talking about family pastor, everything about them is family. That means family comes before the church. When we are talking a pastor, that is business pastor. That means they don't care about church, they don't care about family. All they are after is how to gather money together, you know, to make business in the church of God. But my parents, they fell into that. And it's affected a lot of things in my life. If anything happens to us, my father happens to be somebody who has so many workers under him, so many pastors under him. You know, as a superintendent, he had a prophet too or this. If anything happens to us, we were not taught how to pray. I'm telling you nothing but the truth. I'm not lying. But you dare not miss prayer at night. It's the only one that prays at night. You must not miss it. If you miss it, ah, you know the Koboko, Eleni Mefa. <laughs> Koboko, Eleni Mefa. It is there for you. You cannot escape. It's unescapable. It is there. You can't run away from it. So me, me, right back. So I'm the last born of the family. My sister, <laughs> of blessed memory, she will say, eh, but they call Jeremiah, let's go, let's go. Open the day, open the day, they are watching, they are showing to the let's go. I said, me, of all people. She will jump the fence from our house to the, you know, among all the pastor's children. You know, there, there is always one of them, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. She is, she is. But me, me, I'm so quiet. And they love us in our area. They know that we are different from all that pastor's children that have ever come. Because we are so, our parents, they are disciplinarians. So what am I trying to say? Reading the Bible, okay. We have what we call yearly Bible calendar. Thereby, my pastor, my daddy, we've gone to, they've gone to pastors and meet, you know. By the time he arrives in the evening, he'll be saying that, have you read the Bible? Has he ever sat us down to teach us what story is this? What, what were you taught about this? What is this story about? Nothing like that at all. They failed in that area. I'm very sorry to say. I'm just saying this so that we know how to train our children in the way of the Lord so that they will not depart. It's affected area of my life. We don't have that time. The time was not there. It's just church, church, church for money. Meeting of the superintendent. They will be there from morning to evening. Nothing. If you want to be wayward, ah, uh -uh, the room is there for us. But we chose not to because we are disciplinary. Ah, uh, you are in trouble. All my sisters, we all got married as virgins. I'm telling you nothing but the truth. So what am I trying to say here? It affected my life. And the battle started. I knew God by force by fire. I knew God by force by fire. What I'm doing today, I always give God. I always tell God that, God, I, can, I ran away for so many years. I saw myself running away. What God told me to do, I was not even doing it. I was running away most of the time. So 
what I'm trying to say, we have the opportunity, no matter what we are going to, whether we have a certain mind or uncertain mind, please let us take the time out of your time. And I will say one more thing as well. Do we know our parents? I don't know what they are looking for, one way or the other. They have tampered with our destiny. They have gone to places they are not meant to go because they are looking for help where there is no help. If it's only in Jesus Christ, you find the help. We told you through the scripture. And the moment to start reading the word of God, your life will change. I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony. I can vouch in my life unless you don't want to. It is, uh, when you read the word of God, it is one thing to read the word of God. It is another thing for you to read it with understanding. I can't remember what God has done unto me. Through reading this word, it changed my life. It transformed my life. It's not that I don't read it in the past. I read it like for realization. I read it like for pleasure. I don't read it as a reading it and understand it. I don't. But when battle came, God knew about the battle. Ah, our Gbaro people, power of darkness, they dealt with me. And you know what? This is my husband. If not for God, <laughs> if not for him, that God used for him, I'm not supposed to be standing here. I don't know what, where I would have been. I don't, I can't even explain. It's beyond understanding what I'm saying. It's just a summary of what has happened unto me. That is why I'm telling you, I can vouch with this word. There is no other thing. God warned me that your breakthrough is not anywhere else. It's in this place. Since that time, I stopped going, running around, looking for, you know, for help. Help is nowhere else. I'm telling you, my mothers in the Lord. It's only in this way. If you can read it, digest it, med meditate on it and memorize it. God, God will speak to you. He will be the prophet in your own house, in your life. Trust me, I'm telling you nothing but the truth. There are so many things God has revealed unto us concerning this ministry. And it's coming to pass. And it's still going to pass. So all the promises of God concerning our lives will come to fulfillment. Whether Satan like it or as long as the moment you start reading the Bible with all your heart, you know, in a quiet time, before the day starts getting busy, that is the day your deliverance begins. I'm telling you nothing. I've tried it, it happened. When I go to, to places to go and preach the gospel, I tell them, if you can read it, I can bash my life with it. Read it for one week. Come back and tell me if God has not spoken to you. Unless you don't want to read it. No power anywhere else. <laughs> I've been told to random. It's always like that. I still have five minutes. Please, Pastor, give me more time. So, what am I trying to say? I'll just run up. The fifth one, we see Christ's redeeming power. Where do we see Christ's redeeming power? You find it in Boaz. Because it was Boaz that redeemed who? That redeemed Ruth. He was not meant to be the one to redeem him. It's supposed to be somebody that is next to um, Naomi's um, husband. But that one said it's not going to do because <laughs> he doesn't want to take up the responsibility. Then the sixth one, we, we must be people of character. My sister mentioned it. People of character, even where we think no one is watching, God is watching. God must have said the kind of life Ruth was portraying. And God said, no, I need to visit her, I need to touch her, I need to make her to be in the lineage of my son. And God made it to happen. Who are we to challenge God? We cannot ask questions from God. So that is what God can do. Nobody ever thought. So when we are reading the scripture, what I will implore us is every spirit of unforgiveness, every spirit of pride, every spirit of what you think, the character you think you have, maybe it's anger. <laughs> it's not going to work. Oh. You will read this. Me too, I have it. Oh. I used to get angry. Me too, I have a spirit of unforgiveness. When I realize the person who is responsible for my problem, <laughs> I refuse to forgive that person until I let go. That is when God starts speaking to me. So you cannot be reading the word of God and you are keeping people in your mind. It's not going to work. You are just wasting your time. You are just reading for nothing. You are just, I'm telling you nothing but the truth. So that is the character. We must be people of character. Even when we think no one is watching us, God is watching us. Let me quickly say something. There was a time I was preaching around Ilford. Somebody came and showed me my picture. He said he saw me preaching. I said, if I'm doing evil, that is how I will be caught in the camera. I was caught in the camera preaching. I thank God I was seen doing good things. So God is expecting me to do good things. If you are living on certain life, 
you need to commit everything into the hand of God. It's the only God who can do it. Whatever it is you are going through, whatever might be the problem, he is able to cast it at Jesus' feet. He is able to do more than we could ever imagine. As long as you are trusting in this word of God, it's so powerful. Recently, I was asking something from God, and God was telling me, ah, there is power in my word. My word is a powerful weapon. It just was recent. You know, there are some things. If we are reading the Bible, that doesn't mean the enemy will not be waging war. They will, but they can never, they can never defeat us. God will be speaking unto us. He will be speaking unto us, making us, giving us the assurance that he's with us. He's staying with us. He's fighting the battle. It's only for us to use the armor. This is the old armor of God that God has given unto us. No power. I've never seen that power that can have dominion over our lives unless we are not serious. With this word, very powerful. And God told me, he said, my word is powerful. There is power in my word. That means God is saying that maybe I'm relenting in using the word of God. And I begin again. You know sometimes when you come back from work, you are so tired. Every day I do night vigil. It has become part and parcel of me. But if you don't pray, <laughs> they don't rest. The power of darkness, they don't rest every day. They are waiting for someone to die. They are waiting for someone to be destroyed. If they can stay awake, stay awake all night looking for someone to destroy, what are we doing? Ah, we need to be strong for Jesus. We need to prove that it doesn't happen over us. So the last one, um, the, sorry sir, uh, I'm going to round up now. I'm looking for the seventh one because I've succeeded in mentioning um, six points. Where is the seventh one I want to mention? The seventh one, the seventh one. Holy Spirit, help me, help me. The seventh, God uses unlikely people. Okay, I've mentioned it. God uses unlikely people for his purpose. Who is the unlikely person? It's rich. Hallelujah. Yeah. May the Lord bless us. I have to round up. <laughs> a lot of things to share, lots of testimony. I've got only one minute. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We worship your holy name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Lord, because you have spoken unto us. Because we know that unsettled mind is unsettled life. Whatever it is that is in our life that is not settled, Father, let them be settled. Amen. We look unto you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. And we know you will not fail us. You will not put us to shame. Amen. Father, we pray that you will establish us. You will strengthen us with your strength. You will perfect everything concerning us. And said to us, as you said to the children of Israel, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most precious name, Amen. I have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Shake it together, I roll it over, I roll it over, give, it shall be given unto you, good measures shake it together. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, can we sit down very quickly? Um, thank everyone for coming to service today. We know it's, it's a bit raining outside. I know one or two people have contemplated and said, uh, can I come to go to church today? But well, we thank everyone for being here this uh, this morning. And we say congratulations to our uh, mothers in the house. May the Lord allow us to celebrate more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will not bury our children in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Our children will be for signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And those of us who are still looking, those who are still looking for their own home, this year is going to be your year in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, very quickly, um, we, after the service, uh, can you just stop, can you just stop the recording, please? Yeah. 